When I was a child, I saw a photograph that changed my life. It changed the way that I think. Carl Sagan had instructed a satellite to turn its camera back to Earth. And in this photograph, I saw the greatest example of the power of perspective. Some saw it as just a poor image, a fuzzy photograph containing a nondescript dot, the Earth. And then others saw it as illustrative of humanity, a thin film of life over a speck of dust in what is the greatest sandstorm you can imagine. It defined humans and our place in the universe, perspective. Many years later, as a new professor at the University of California at Irvine, I obtained a new biological tool, stem cells, embryonic stem cells to be precise, formed from the union of sperm and egg. Some people saw in this tool the hand of God, no less, and others, they saw it as a biological mess. <laughs> Still others like me see it as the single greatest advancement, the greatest tool that medical research has ever, ever known. One single cell that can form any cell in the human body, and therefore one single cell that has the potential to treat every single human disease. It was this perspective that allowed me hope. It allowed me that sense of the promise of discovery while contemplating disease. This perspective, it allowed me to maintain a sense of innocent intrigue and excitement when contemplating the death and demise of the human body. And honestly, I still struggle with that one, how to maintain this sense of innocence and intrigue and discovery when talking to a patient dying of a terminal disease. And what I have learned is that innocent intrigue is the reason that discoveries happen. It is the pick for every lock. And as each successive lock is opened, that sense of intrigue is heightened and the innocence is fed. Stem cells have created a new perspective that allows us to take a new look at human disease. My team at UCI discovered that a cell type was missing after spinal cord injury. We had known that decades of spinal cord research had failed to produce a treatment. And we're well aware that decades of stem cell research has failed to produce spinal cord tissue. So we began a program, and frankly, many thought it could not be done. But we had a radically different perspective. We reinvented cell culture techniques that were decades old with the idea of generating pure spinal cord from stem cells. We ignored protocols that were dogma, we decided that we would never hire a cell culture technician that was experienced for fear that they would resort to old styles and old techniques rather than facing each step like it had never been contemplated before, rather than face each day of this two to three month process with a fresh set of eyes and a new perspective. Stem cells, they've created a snowball effect of innocent intrigue and discovery. And what we found was by mixing brand new uh, concoctions of things together in dishes every day for months on end, we succeeded in generating for the first time a high purity cell type in the human body, virtually pure spinal cord cells from stem cells. This enabled the world's first clinical trial using the stem cell type, and five patients have now been treated. Their interim clinical results are excellent, and we have every reason to believe that the treatment's working. Timothy Atchison is the first spinal cord patient to re have received our treatment, and in fact, the first patient with any disorder in the world to receive this cell type. So having succeeded once at generating a very high purity adult cell type from stem cells, we just decided to try it again. So this time we generated motor neurons those cells in your spinal cord that receive input from your brain and then control every moving thing in your body. So motor neurons are lost in ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, and they're also lost in spinal muscular atrophy, the leading genetic killer of infants. Babies with spinal muscular atrophy waste. They either starve to death or they die of lung failure. This is a terrible disease for which there is no cure, and it is a pure and perfect motor neuron storm. 
So while others were looking to genetic tweaks and manipulation to approach the disease, we took a different perspective to make motor neurons from stem cells and replace the ones that were lost. And we've succeeded in doing so. In rodents with motor neuron loss, we have transplanted human motor neurons and restored arm function and leg function, lung function and heart function. It's an amazing thing. I can tell you that over the last six years, my team, with certainty, they have never had a shadow of doubt, not one naysayer in the group. We keep a picture of Gwendolyn Strong on our fridge at work, and we keep a memory of Amanda Cardero Valerino in our hearts and our minds. Honestly, this has been a matter of mental perspective in approaching the disease as much as it has been one of scientific advance. So now I have the privilege of sharing with you and actually sharing with the world for the first time right now, today here, a story of how perspective allowed us to generate a new treatment for cancer. Bob Dillman and his colleagues at Hogue Hospital had over the course of 15 years developed an ingenious treatment for cancer, except they could not get it to work consistently and the program was at an end. In this approach, Cancers were taken from the patient and grown in a dish and then exposed to a fraction of blood to educate the immune system. The immune system learnt how to recognize the tumor and when put back into a patient, attacked the cancer. In 17% of patients, there was regression of tumors and many of them live a cancer-free life thereafter. An incredible discovery, but one that was at an end. It could not be ramped up. The tumors only grew half the time in culture. And it took so long that half the patients died while waiting. So in comes the power of perspective. As this program was being shut down, the leaders of Hogue Hospital asked me and my team to take a look at it. And we recognized that as they were growing these tumors out for months on end, they were inadvertently selecting for cancer stem cells. Now, you should know that cancer stem cells are the single greatest advance in the history of cancer research. Cancer stem cells drop seeds, and they become tumors. But they can also lie dormant for years. So, if a patient is irradiated or has chemotherapy or a tumor is excised, those dormant, sleeping cancer stem cells are missed. The researchers at Hogue Hospital had inadvertently been selecting for these cancer stem cells. The months of tissue growth on end were so stressful that only the most resilient cells survived the cancer stem cell. Well, this is the, the stem cell perspective. Recognizing that they were actually pulling out cancer stem cells, we bathed tumors in solutions that nurtured stem cell development we were able to take a process that was 11 months and reduce it down to six weeks. And we can pull cancer stem cells from every tumor, not only half of them, and not only tumors from melanoma. Most importantly, we can do this in a time frame that's quick enough that none of the patients die while waiting. So in late stage melanoma, if left unchecked, the patient dies within months. In our latest clinical trial, a phase two clinical trial, 72% of patients are alive beyond two years, and that time period is getting longer every day. Three out of four patients are responding, like this one, Chris Simpson. I can't tell you how wonderful it is for my team to be part of a solution for cancer. Stem cells offered us a fresh perspective a new set of eyes on a treatment that had been shut down. We're treating melanoma right now. Very, very soon we'll be treating liver cancer and then pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, brain cancer, and breast cancer. We live our lives seeking and instituting and protecting certainty. We plan for retirement and we set roots and we ensure against chance. We seek certainty in everything that we do. But when you are faced with a disease that is incurable, 
that wastes and ruins your body or that of someone that you love, certainty is the last thing that you want. Stem cells have afforded us the opportunity to take a fresh look at human disease and the mechanisms that are responsible for it. Stem cells have reinvigorated that sense of innocent intrigue and excitement in millions of researchers across the planet that have otherwise been beaten down by that relentless progress of human disease. We have a new and exciting tool. Innocent intrigue has bred discovery, and discovery has bred innocent intrigue all over again. Thank you very much.